my talk of today is IAQ Initiative 2.0. Utilizing IT innovation and knowledge to change our society, our economy, and our future. This is another picture of Hong Kong. And Hong Kong wasn't like this. We always had clear and bright sky. We spent over 80% of our time indoor. And all these commercial buildings rely on mechanical ventilation. And if you are fortunate enough to work in this building here, the landlord will charge you $8 per square foot per month of air conditioner charge. Not the rental, the end, rental is 80 The air con charge is $8. If you have an office, 10,000 square feet, this transpires to $1 million a year for the air you breathe working in this building. Get some figures. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in the year 2000. And between 2006, it went up from 360 parts per million to it was going up at a rate of 1% per year. And it's the CO2 level in front of Victoria Harbor. By the year 2010, which is not far off, the CO2 level will be 400 because China has just overtaken the USA as the biggest polluter. By the year 2030, you will be eyewitnessing the total disintegration of the North, North Pole ice. 800 and 1,000 are the excellent and good air quality standards according to the IAQ guidance notes published by the Hong Kong government. We are required to provide five air changes by the mechanical means <laughs> to our building. Every hour you change the air five times based on the volume and so on. But that building order, the law was established 50 years ago at the time when I was a student. Is this 500 adequate? No. That's why if you work in one of these tall buildings and you feel yawning and dozing off because the carbon dioxide level has gone up above the threshold level. That is when it, it is above 2,005 parts per million. And it happens all the time in Hong Kong these days. And in a long exposure, you've got all kinds of illness. And these are the sick building syndrome caused by inadequate ventilation of your building. Well, how about it? If you simply classify formaldehyde, nitrogen oxide, these are caused irritations. Class one, and then class two, fungus, legendary disease, dust, chemicals, vapor, and so on. This cause allergy, and it also the bacteria, the bug itself, cause your illness. Your allergy make you more susceptible, causing all this syndrome. Class three, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. These are the most common uh, pollutants. It's causing you all kinds of illness like this. And then class four, formaldehyde, radon, tobacco smoke, causing cancer because today cancer is related to nearly 50% of the death. And these are the mandatory guideline levels. There's a whole list of pollutants, of the common indoor air quality pollutants. And all these are the Eastern country. Why is it only in the Orient? Well, the Western culture, they have the professional society if they did their need, they asked the legislator propose to the government to pass the law. But in the Orient, our culture is different. It's the government who has got the initiative and the motivation and tell you that this is what you do. That is the standard and that is what you have to follow. Well, which one is better? You tell me. Hong Kong is the first one to come up with such a list. After eight years and $200 million of spending, our government has failed to certify one single building. Honestly, all of us have not seen any of the certificate. In order to know our air quality, why we do want to know our air quality? Energy saving, money saving. Healthy environment is also money saving for you and troubleshooting is for the management. You have to know it before you can do the troubleshooting. 2.0, 
you are conscious of the air quality, you are concerned of the environmental. If you want to legislate indoor air quality, you have to have a very good scientific standard. If I were a good standard, you cannot enforce it. That is the problem with our IAQ guidance note. This Ten Commandments is nothing new, because back in the year 2001, I was writing to the government, and then the government was calling for a symposium of indoor air quality for reviewing uh, what we have done. Now, let's go back to the government standard. Right away, I can tell you very quickly, without going too deep into it. So many wrongs in this standard. Number one, room temperature and relative humidity. The government conveniently copied the American and European standard. In Europe, they don't use air conditioning, they use central heating. Same as in America, respirators are showing the dust particle. But the government still doesn't want to change its PM10. It used to be PM1 instead. Start with one micron and below, because those small particles are the harmful ones, which you can breathe right into your nut. Okay? Radon, radioactive. I once spoke to a, a group of graduate students and professors. I asked them, how many of you are qualified or have experience to handle radioactive substance? Only three raised their hand. And bacteria. They are blaming the good guys because airborne bacteria are the benevolent bacteria. There's six types of pathogens. Aerobic is the good one. You need it to build up your body resistance as well. The other six kinds are pathogenic. They are the bad ones. Number four, porn measurement. Four samples in eight hours. As you can see from the profile, it changes so quickly. Statistically wrong, it's methodologically wrong. Now, number five, it violates the law of uniform uniformity standard. You have one guess in another guess. You should use volume to volume. Here, statistically, they have no reason to use those, those 81, 61, 87, run them off because who cares? Uh, last year, uh, we did an exhibition at the big exhibition hall uh, in the airport. And let us pick this one, the temperature, and you can expand it easily. You can see that in a big hall with air con conditioned, this red line stays between 24 to 24.5. Very well controlled, the air uh, temperature. The objective, energy saving, health, troubleshooting, and fair play. And what happened is government and the owner, they are on the IAQ initiative 1.0. The initiative and motivation come from top down. They give you a certificate. They tell you, engineer, you, I want you to get me the certificate. I don't care how you do it. And they tell you, I got the certificate. I'm fair to you. But initiative 2.0, oh, it goes from this way up. We want to be fair. I want the engineer to serve the part. The engineer will say, show them, show the owner the profile. You can do it with a good scientist standard. You have to abide to the Ten Commandments. And this is what you can do. And towards the end, I'd like to share with you a quotation from Confucius. And this is my scientist interpretation of Confucius. Confucius, I have seen the joy me mean that the moral of learning is in differentiating the right and the wrong. In making progress, as Confucius said, Gao ya san, yao ya san, ya ya san, what it means, progress in the past, progress again, progress every day. It's in making progress. As a scientist, my progress is in, for IAQ, is simplification, standardization, implementation, uh -huh. integration, and globalization. And what I mean globalization is to share. My knowledge is to share with you. Okay? And in the pursuit of excellence, we are always trying to do our best. Thank you.
Thank you very much.